going on YouTube this is Necro Stevo and we're finally back with another narrated Wi-Fi battle video and on Tuesday nonetheless uh, I know a lot of you either are getting ready for your spring breaks or on spring break or just missed your spring break because it was last week and for some reason you're in a coma until you view this video either way I hope you'll have a wonderful spring breaks if you're doing that leave some uh, spring break plans there in the comments there if you all are doing anything fun I myself am taking my little brother to Atlanta for a little road trip of sorts, so we'll, we'll see if we have any fun there at the later end of the week there. I'm not sure what he's expecting, but being a high school senior, y you gotta have some fun, right? Now today's match is a battle that I had against Damien. I will leave his Twitter handle in the description. Really fun battle against him. He has some very inventive sets and some great ideas. I'm really happy I got a chance to battle him. I myself, I'm using Torterra in this match alongside Heatran which is a specially defensive one, Assault Vest Silbro, which I haven't been able to unlock the potential yet of, but uh, it's I'm going to do it eventually. And of course I have Crobat to get rid of hazards and throw some nice Brave Birds around, and uh, Mega Manectric as well. Now just starting out, since he started out with Darmanitan, I was fairly certain it was Scarfed, because most people don't start off with Darmanitan and it's not Scarfed. I needed to see the damage to be sure though, and that damage on my offensive Slowbro definitely tells me that he's Scarfed. If he were banded, it would have done over half. Uh, and I didn't know what he would switch into, but I I figured nothing on his team really wanted to take a Surf. Not, not really. He actually goes for a Volt Switch with his Cobalion, and that's a fairly standard move on Cobalion, so I wasn't sure of the set on that yet. And so I just decided to go for a Fire Blast there, expecting him to stay in and maybe set up rocks or something like that. I'm able to get off some good damage onto his Bufalon, but unfortunately for me, that thing is banded, and this is my offensive Torterra, and it cannot take... It. If Torterra had an Afro of his own, maybe he could take those, but not just straight up like that. But seeing that damage, I definitely know that he is banded, and so switching into Aegis Slash is an easy decision to make, because he's stuck in a normal type move. Uh, and I knew he would probably switch into Venusaur, and I really just wanted to put some damage on Venusaur while I could. I, If he had the Synthesis, I could force him into going for it. If he had Leech Seed or Sleep Powder, Torterra blocks those. He's going to end up Mega Evolving right here, and he goes for Synthesis, so that's good because I was able to get Torterra in safely. Now, as I mentioned, this is my offensive Torterra, uh, so I actually have um, Stealth Rocks, Wood Hammer, Synthesis, and Earthquake on it. And Venusaur is just too bulky here. We're, we're both just soaking in some rays, but Venusaur is going to win that war just because, number one, he's more bulky, and number two, he has Toxic. I was really worried he had Venoshock, and he actually does. I haven't seen that on Venusaur. I've been thinking of putting it on there myself, but you see how well Venusaur takes that Earthquake. Stab, Torterra's max, uh, not max attack, I think I have some speed on it as well to outrun some threats, but, um, it, uh, it just was not enough. So seeing that it's kind of going to be pointless to try to damage him as long as he has Synthesis and I'm poisoned, I just decided to put up my Stealth Rocks. Uh, Torterra is going to go down to Toxic Poison, but that is okay because seeing that Venusaur is definitely more defensive, it also revealed that Moveset to me which shows me that Crobat's basically going to wall him for all intents and purposes. I figured Rotom might be coming in, so I decided to go for Taunt instead of going straight for the Brave Bird. Because when Rotom is taunted, that means he can't burn me, he can't trick any items off, he becomes a lot easier to deal with. And just Rotom heat form, I, I know Rotom Wash is the most popular Rotom form because of the typing, and Hydro Pump as opposed to Overheat of course, but I just like Rotom heat form so much more. I haven't had a lot of occasion to use my favorite Rotom form, the Mo form, but that's okay. You guys are going to see more of that later for sure, because I just really like that Rotom form. Now, against um, this Landorus, I wasn't sure what to expect. He, he expects my switch back into my Crobat and goes for the Hidden Power Ice. And I didn't really want to uh, 
risk going for a Brave Burn and it not killing or anything like that, so I just decided to go for a Roost first. And he switches into his Bufalant there, maybe thinking that I maybe thinking that I would switch out, but I didn't want to switch anything into a possible Bandit Earthquake or a Bandit uh, Head Charge or even a Wild Charge if you wanted a neutral type move there. Even Defensive Form Aegis Slash didn't really want to take that, so I decided to go for the Brave Bird to knock him out. Hoping that he was going to go for a Volt Switch again, I tried to bring him a Netric, but he just went straight for Stone Edge, and so seeing that tells me that he is, okay, he's running some offensive coverage moves, but I'm not seeing any uh, uh, other weird moves like Stealth Rocks or Taunt or even Toxic, and so I was wondering if he was Assault Vest, and I actually found out at the end of the battle that he was running Assault Vest Cobalion with max HP and max defense, which is just such a really, that's a cool idea, because Cobalion has an interesting stat spread, and alongside its uh, higher than average speed, it, uh, it can function very well. Now, I figured Landorus would be coming back in here after I came in to block his Rotom heat form. I went for Lava Plume just to try to get a burn off. I could have gone for Toxic, which would have been more reliable, but I was like, please get a burn, and I am unable to get it. I switched in Slowbro thinking that I would be able to take those Earth Powers better than I am able to, but he's obviously Sheer Force with the Life, er life Orb, excuse me, so those are going to be doing a large grip of damage there. But since I know that he is show force with life orb, I know that my crow had outspeed, so I'm able to revenge kill him quite easily there. And then Bob, again, is going to come out. I don't know if you all noticed, but almost all of his Pokemon are named Bob. It made remembering his team at the time very difficult, because I sometimes in my brain I was like, okay, which one's Bob? How much HP does Bob have left? And there were four of them or five of them were named Bob, so that was kind of fun. Uh, that's why they don't allow you to do that during tournaments, of course, naming everything the same thing. But here, I figured a Volt Switch would KO uh, Rotom Heat at that amount of HP that it was at. I didn't think it was a defensive form, and so I just went for the Volt Switch instead of going for a Thunderbolt. This will allow me to get back out into Crobat and force him to go out into Darmanitan if he wants to outspeed me. Uh, here, I predicted him to over-predict and to go for a U-turn. I am a bulky Crobat, so a Flare Blitz may not have killed me just because he is uh, Scarfed. A Rock Slide? Uh, not too sure there. And here is where I'm just like, man, this Cobalion is taking these hits way too well. And so here is where I figured out that it was probably a max HP, max defense. But it was not until after the battle that I realized that it was also Assault Vest, because he takes two of those Brave Birds. I'm fairly certain the second one was minimum damage. Now, he does miss a Stone Edge right there, although I don't think that that mattered just because how bulky my Crobat is. It has max HP and max speed. So it's... It, just has a lot of HP, and so a, a Stone Edge coming unstabbed from a non-attack invested Cobalion, I don't see that doing too much damage. And here we see Flare Blitz um, going ahead and KOing there. I'm pretty sure he got back damage there, so it didn't really matter that he missed the Stone Edge because he still KO'd my um, Crobat. I guess if he had gotten a crit on the Stone Edge, maybe. Uh, and here, I, I really didn't expect for it to kill. I was trying to get the Weakness poly Policy activation when I could have just gone for a Shadow Sneak. Uh, that's unfortunate because that leaves me with just my Mega Manetric and my Heatran. And of course, we already have seen that Venusaur has the ability to go for Toxic, Venoshock, Synthesis, and has one more move, which is probably Elite Seed. At least that's what I assumed at the time. Because what a great way to get back to your HP, right? And he's actually going to go for Elite Seed here. And I was looking at the two remaining Pokemon I had and going, okay. How am I going to win this without getting outstalled by this thing? Because we've all seen Mega, Mega Venusaur. I knew that he had used two Synthesis earlier, and he just used a third one right there. So this really would... Number one, I needed to burn him with Lava Plume to offset the Leech Seed damage that he was receiving. And then I also needed to switch in and out between the two Heatran and Mega Manetric to stop him from getting Leech Seed recovery, and to also hopefully make him burn up a lot of these synthesis. Then I could hopefully outstall it with just Heatran, because Mega Manetric has Flamethrower, not Overheat. So I wouldn't... It's unlikely that I would be able to do too much with Mega Manetric besides force him to go for those synthesis. Now this is basically just a War of Attrition here. We see that Venusaur is basically getting back about the same amount of HP that he's um, doling out there. I do feel like he... Uh, he was a little... He used his synthesis ability a little bit too much. He's already used it five times, I believe, and he wasn't even under half HP for, on some of those. So if he had just kind of waited, he could have whittled down my Heatran a lot more. And that's where, uh, if you guys are ever in tournaments or things like that, it's just good to know the PP amount that um, 
certain moves could have. Recovery moves or really powerful moves like Fire Blast or more random moves. Uh, it's good to know how many times you can use them because then you can really count how many times your opponent can go for that strategy. You can predict when they're going to use it. Now, right there, he predicted my switch into Mega Manetric because he was getting too much HP back from the Leech Siege. So that was a great prediction on his part. But I kind of needed Mega Manetric to die because I wanted to bring in Heatran on this turn. And basically, I wanted to force him to go for Elite Seed again because I knew we still had two Synthesis left. But he decided to go for a Synthesis, and I was like, dang it, I really wanted to just finish him off with Lava Plume right there. And I, I actually am just going to have to just sit in here with him for, I think we do this for seven or eight turns, just back and forth. He can't hit me with Toxic or Venoshock. He uses his last synthesis, and so now he has to stall me out. But at this point, I have his HP so low that he is going to be gaining back fewer HP than I'm doing between the, the Lava Plume and the burn damage. And so on this next turn, he's actually going to go down after a very, very long stall war there. You guys know me. Normally, I don't have the patience for those, but Damien just gave me such a good battle in the part of it in the beginning there. I really wanted to see what happened if I had some patience and stuck out the battle at the end there. But I hope you all enjoyed today's battle. Uh, leave those spring break plans in the, the, the comments down below. And if you could all please hit that like button, I would really appreciate it. I don't normally ask for that, but I'm going to start asking for that more because I've been doing research on Google Analytics and just finding out how that tends to affect things. And that really helps out a lot more than you all realize. So if we can hit a good 35 likes on this video, then I will definitely be uploading a bonus video this week. So we'll see if we can hit that goal. And I will talk to you all later. Bye now.